we are lucky to have Josh Burgoyne. He's the Northern Territory Opposition Shadow Minister for Territory Families and a whole lot of other portfolios as well. Josh Burgoyne, thank you so much for your time. Now, what was Good announced afternoon, yesterday... Mr. Bob. What was announced yesterday, uh, yesterday, restricted takeaway sales of alcohol, more welfare spending, do you think that's a fix that will last for any period of time? What we had yesterday from the Prime Minister was basically putting a Band-Aid over a bullet wound. The issues we have here in Alice Springs are deep and, and they are entrenched. And what we have been calling for with the Mayor with other federal members of parliament was some of the reintroduction of those stronger futures measures. It's really important, I've heard you speak for quite a while about voices. We have two Aboriginal women in Senator Jacinta Price and Mariam Scrimgeour, who's a Labor federal member of parliament. These women sit on opposite sides of the aisle in parliament, but at the end of the day, have both been calling for a reintroduction of some of these measures that would see some of the most vulnerable being Aboriginal women and children that live in some of these town camps exposed to less domestic violence. So, unfortunately, when the Prime Minister got off the plane yesterday, um, we were really hoping for action. We were really hoping for something that would spark change in our community. Unfortunately, what we've heard are more words and basically now a limiting of alcohol sales to four hours a day. And I've just come back from town and what we're seeing now are long lines outside alcohol uh, take away alcohol outlets right across the town. I just wonder if this uh, this sort of measure has worked anywhere really for long because, I mean, it, this is what gets me. It is not just, right, it's not just in Alice Springs. It's in, uh, well, it's in Yundamu, it's in Wadair, it's in Tennant Creek. Uh, we've seen bits of it in Catherine. We've seen a two-year-old rape there. I mean... It is in community after community, and just it just happens to be the focus on Alice Springs. I know it's worse there. But listen, we're told the voice, right? The voice, the Prime Minister reckons, that's, that's going to be the, the magic bullet here. But what gets me is that when... And the Chief Minister is saying, we've got to have local Aborigines decide more for themselves. The problem with this approach is that I don't see enough local Aboriginal leaders stepping up now. When the booze ban was dropped last year, just 15, one five, of the 144 Aboriginal communities that had their bans lifted asked for those bans to stay. Seems to me not enough local Aboriginal communities are helping themselves. It's a very interesting point you raise, and I would like to talk about um, an Aboriginal organisation in Congress in our town. Now, their CEO, Donna Archie, is an Indigenous woman. She's grown up in this town, and I actually went to school with her children. This is a woman who was her home was broken into only a few days ago. And she's been a strong advocate, a strong advocate for these Stronger Futures measures being brought back in. So certainly we do have Indigenous voices pleading with the powers that be, with the government, to basically reintroduce some of these measures. Unfortunately, it's falling on deaf ears. And I think that's what's really important here to, to understand, is that people are calling. Indigenous voices, people are calling, but they're being ignored. And I guess that really goes back to the question is, will having more voices necessarily achieve the outcome of people being heard if we're not listening to the leaders in our community now with Senator Jacinta Price, with Marion Scrimgeour and with Donna Archie, the CEO of Congress, which is a health organisation here in Alice Springs, when they are calling so loudly and clearly for these things to occur, yet those that are in power seem to be ignoring those very uh, strong voices. Just one more issue I want to come back to, uh, Josh Burgoyne. Um, I think we're wrong to just demand something for Alice Springs. We've got to look at the broader picture. I, we see this sort of issue uh, in so many other places. Uh, I mentioned Tennant Creek. I mentioned Arrakan. I mentioned Wadair, where dozens of homes have been burned or trashed. A man killed there. Or now Carnarvon, where locals are also demanding action while local routes youths run wildly, trashing new build houses, for instance. What do you think is the problem we're facing here? It is not just booze in Alice Springs. Well, it's a breakdown of communities, and that's what's really been unfortunate for, for this great town of Alice Springs. I was listening to the tourism operator today talk about one of the um, unfortunate things that have happened with all this media uh, 
coverage has been that there have been a lot of tourists basically calling up and cancelling their trips to Alice Springs. Now, that's one side effect of this, but what we need to make sure, and when you talk about what is the clear solutions with some of these issues, it's the breakdown of, of these communities. It's the breakdown of some family units, which is basically leading to a lot of these young people not feeling like they have a safe home and they're out on the streets at night. Now, we do point to alcohol in a lot of these instances because we do know that, uh, unfortunately, in a lot of cases, those homes of those young people aren't safe. Uh, their parents are intoxicated. And as you pointed out earlier, when Linda Burney came to Alice Springs, she saw the reality that is a lot of, unfortunately, Aboriginal women who are subjected to domestic violence ending up in our hospital. Um, these, it's a very complex problem. I'm not pretending like we all have the solutions, but we do know that we need some serious action to be taken. We do know that there are some hard choices that can be made. When we, there's a lot of money that goes into supposedly fixing these problems and it's not having the desired effect. So we need to seriously look at where we are spending the money currently. Is it working? If it's not, we need to make sure that we're investing in real programs that will actually go some way to fixing the issues that we face here like you rightly said, not just in Alice Springs, right across the Northern Territory and right across the country. This, this is correct. 